How good will the Denver Broncos offense be this upcoming NFL season? Now, Nathaniel Hackett takes over as head coach and he has also announced that he is going to be the play caller for those of you guys who don't know that already. And last year, Denver's offense was, it was all right. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was decent. They were 23rd in points per game, 19th in yards per game. They were 12th in the NFL in rushing yards per game, and they had the 19th best passing offense. So this offense was okay last year. And Teddy Bridgewater really surprised me. Teddy Bridgewater was actually not all that bad last year. He played pretty solid at times. So you upgrade that quarterback and you bring in Russell Wilson. And Russell Wilson, some people think that he has regressed, which I don't know if I'll say he has regressed because I still think that Russell Wilson is just as good as how he has been in the past. But I can't understand why some people say that Russell Wilson has kind of taken a step back. I was arguing with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago and was going back and forth about Russell Wilson. He was saying that Russell Wilson isn't even a top eight quarterback no more. And I was saying, bro, what's wrong with you? You don't think Russell Wilson is a top eight quarterback? Look what he's done with the Seattle Seahawks the last couple of seasons. Without Russell Wilson, there pretty much is no Seattle making it into the postseason as many times that they've had over the last, what, three, four years because they haven't really had outstanding offensive line play and their defenses haven't really been all that great neither. And even Pete Carroll said um, at some point during last year when Russell Wilson had the missed time of injury, he said that if it wasn't for Russell Wilson, we wouldn't have been able to have the success that we've had for so long. So Russell Wilson was really the Seattle Seahawks in a sense. So you bring him to Denver. And Denver fans have always felt that they are just a quarterback away. You got your quarterback now. Now your whole entire offense should just boom. It should explode. You have a really outstanding group of wide receivers. You have Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, KJ Hamler. Cortland Sutton last year, many people thought he was going to be in for a big season, but even I had a feeling that he was going to kind of have a letdown year, not because of him, but simply for the fact that you were going to have Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. With Russell Wilson at quarterback, I think that you're going to see Cortland Sutton definitely end up playing at the level that many people thought that he would last year. And I'm going to say it again before you guys start screaming at me in the comment section. I'm not saying that Cortland Sutton had a disappointing season last year because of him. It was because of his quarterback situation. Russell Wilson is the best deep ball thrower in the NFL. So you pair him up with Cortland Sutton, who happens to be one of the best deep threats in the league. You should see Cortland Sutton end up having a Pro Bowl caliber season this year. And he was targeted 98 times. So I think that if I had to project Cortland Sutton's stats for this year, I probably think that he will have 80 receptions somewhere around there, 1,100 to 1,200 receiving yards, and maybe eight or nine touchdowns this season. I think that you're definitely going to see Cortland Sutton definitely have a really outstanding season. You look at Jerry Judy, he missed a little bit of time last year due to injuries. So with him coming back fully healthy, if he can stay healthy throughout the season, I also don't see no reason why he can end up having a Pro Bowl caliber season as well. Tim Patrick was kind of the biggest surprise for me on this offense last year. You know, we was all talking about who were going to be some breakouts on this offense last year. And there was a good amount of Denver Broncos fans who told me that I was overlooking Tim Patrick. He had a really good training camp, really good spring season, but... You know, I I can only cover as so many players because I talk about almost every single NFL team. So I apologize if I don't know every single breakout stud from every roster. But Tim Patrick had a really solid year last year. 53 receptions, 734 receiving yards, and five touchdowns. And at times, he seemed to be Teddy Bridgewater's go-to target at moments. He was really good when it came to moving the chains. He also found the end zone more than any other wide receiver on the roster. So I'm definitely going to give Tim Patrick his flowers. And then you have tied in. 
Albert O. I really want to try to pronounce his last name because I love saying these last names, but you guys already know how it goes. It's fun to say, but really difficult to pronounce. So I'm not going to disrespect Mr. Albert O. like that, but I can definitely understand why Denver was willing to trade away Noah Fant because this guy was really good last year. And I don't really think enough people understand how good he was. He was targeted 40 times and caught 33 receptions. Think about that. The dude only had seven incompletions when he was targeted. So you also look at the fact that not only does he have reliable hands, but he is incredibly athletic. He probably is more athletic than Noah Fan in a sense because this guy can really move. And he doesn't move the way that you see a normal tight end move. Like he can make people miss and he can he doesn't have to run through you. Like he can get really shifty. He can get jiggy on you. And I, I was really surprised when I was watching Alberto play last year. I was saying, Whoa, is this really a tight end? He looks as if he could play a little bit of receiver because he can really move. And he's a little shifty, really nimble in the open field. He has really good speed. So I'm really excited about Alberto. I'm going to pick him up on a lot of my fantasy rosters. I don't know if I'm going to start him, but I'm just going to have him on my bench just in case he ends up going off. Because you see, there's so many weapons in the passing game for Denver that... I don't think that Albert O is going to get as much volume to have the kind of season that many people are hoping that he can have. When I've been looking at some stat predictions, I've seen 800, 900 yards. I don't know if he's going to be able to reach that threshold because if he's going to have 800, 900 yards, you're telling me that he's going to end up having at least 70 or 80 targets this year. And I really can't see that. I think he'll probably be around 50 or 60 simply for the fact that you have to account for Tim Patrick. You have to account for Judy and Corlin Satan also. So for him, I definitely think he's going to be really productive. I definitely feel he's going to be really good inside of the red zone. But I don't think when it comes to having a a year when he can just go off over a thousand yards, I don't know. Because there's just so many players in this offense that are having to get targets that if Alberto was to end up having that kind of season that people are hoping that he can have, and really it's not Broncos fans that are thinking this, it's really the people in the fantasy football world who are hoping for this kind of season because you guys know how it is with the fantasy football people. They, t- they do their breakouts around this time, and they're giving lofty... um expectations because they want to hype up their sleepers but if you're really looking at this offense and the target shares for everybody I really don't think it's enough volume to go around for Albert though to end up reaching 800 900 yards still a very great player still expecting him to be really good but I think you could kind of see him around 500 600 yards max I'd be really surprised if he got over 700 you look at running back Running back is a really intriguing situation because you have the rising young player and Javante Williams who had 203 carries for 903 rushing yards, four touchdowns, and now it's 4.4 yards per attempt. He also was a factor in the passing game. He caught 43 passes for 316 receiving yards and three touchdowns. So Javante Williams is coming up. He could be in for a really big season. However, He's fighting off Melvin Gordon. And Melvin Gordon isn't going down without a fight. And Melvin Gordon has already came out and said several times that he still has a lot left in the tank. And he's just not going to surrender his role and take a backseat to anybody. And no disrespect to Javante Williams. You get what I'm saying? Melvin Gordon also said that. He said him and Javante Williams are really good friends. They talk almost every day. But... He's not taking a backseat to nobody. He still has a lot to prove, and he can still be a really productive halfback. And Melvin Gordon, to his credit, you know, he was was solid last year, had the same amount of carries, 918 rushing yards, 8 touchdowns, 5.4.5 yards per attempt. So 
we're definitely still going to see a two-headed attack. The only way that I really see Javante Williams really just taking over and getting the majority of carries is if Melvin Gordon ends up going down with an injury and ends up missing time, then that's where I can see Javante Williams starting to get the bulk load of the carries. But if Melvin Gordon does stay healthy, for the whole entire season, I still expect to see a two-headed attack, a two-headed rotation. And then the offensive line is really solid. So overall, this is an offense that I am expecting to be in the top 10 this season. I'm expecting big things out of Russell Wilson. I think he's going to end up putting up phenomenal numbers. He could be in for the best season of his career because remember in Seattle, he never really had an offensive line this good. He never really had a legitimate running game for the most part. There were many seasons when Russell Wilson was carrying the load on the ground for Seattle at times. So I think that this is going to be a phenomenal offense, even though I don't know how good of a play caller Nathaniel Hackett is going to be. But when you have a lead quarterback, he can make a below average or average play caller look better compared to if you had a Drew Locke or Teddy Bridge or that quarterback. So for Russell Wilson, I think that he's going to pick up from where he left off last year. I still think he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He's definitely in my top 10. Don't know about many of you guys, but I still regard him as one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And I think that he's going to be in for a season when maybe he could be in the MVP conversation because I don't think Russell Wilson has ever had an offense that had this much talent, not just at wide receiver, but in the run game, and that the offensive line position. And I understand he had Marshawn Lynch, but after Marshawn, you know, retired, the run game for Seattle wasn't as great as what it was when they had primetime beast mode. So let me know how you guys feel about the Denver Broncos offense going into the 2022 NFL season. And I appreciate you guys for listening to this episode of the podcast. Make sure that you check out the JT Sports Podcast, available on all podcasting platforms, wherever you get your podcasts from. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, the JT Sports Podcast is available on every single podcasting platform. And I will see you guys with another episode of the JT Sports Podcast.